Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to the Hour of Victory broadcast. I'm your delighted host today, Pastor Whitey Thoroughgood. And today is the day that we take the Lord's Supper. But there is a word from the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for tuning in once again to the broadcast on today as we worship via virtual church. Today's message is, where is the sacrifice? I'm excited about this message. excited for you to hear it. And I pray that it blesses your soul. Oftentimes, in this day and time, I've come to realize that People see our smoke and our fire, they see our praise breaks and they see our, our uh, services and they see the high points. But in our personal life, where is the sacrifice? We see your wood, we see your smoke, but where's the sacrifice? And I pray that in this age where they tell us that it's easy to obtain or walk this walk, uh, this Christian walk, that I pray that the saints remember that there is a sacrifice. There are some things that we have to give up. We can't hold hands with the world and still uh, fully do what God wants us to do. There are some things we have to let go. And I pray that you get uh, something from this word. We'll be right back after this with the Lord's Supper. God bless you. Those of you who have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to the book of Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And I'll be reading verses 6 and 7. And it reads, Thusly Abraham made Isaac carry the wood for the sacrifice. And he himself carried a knife and live coals for starting the fire. As they walked along together, Isaac spoke up, Father, he answered, yes, my son. Isaac said, I see that you have the coals and the wood. He said, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. <clears throat> I ask that you all will pray with me on the day. I'm using a little bit of my voice, but I'm still going to teach this how God gave it to me. Amen. Amen. I want to speak to you this morning for a few brief moments from the topic. Where is the sacrifice? <clears throat> Look at the person beside you and say, neighbor. neighbor. Where, is Where is the sacrifice? See, there was a time when church workers and ministry leaders didn't just honor God. There was a time when we just didn't have lip service and say that God was our father, our creator, our maker, and our everything. But there was a time when we once reverenced God. See, if I honor you, I pay you the respect you deserve. I give you your accolades for what you've done and what you are endeavoring to do. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I esteem you highly. Just because I honor you, it doesn't mean I esteem you. You know, I can honor my enemy if they have some good attributes. So there's a difference between honoring and reverencing. But see, if I reverence you, there's a place in my heart and in my life in which I hold you in high regard. Can I talk this morning? See, there's certain things I just won't do or say if I know you're listening. When I reverence you, certain things I won't do if I know you're watching. I won't just come into your presence or in your company any kind of way. If I reverence you. Saints, there was a time when we used to reverence God, but now in this generation, some of us has lost or have lost our high esteem for him. I think one of the issues is we've seen representatives who were used by God publicly not reverence him privately. And in return, that has caused us to lose our reverence because when we as God representatives make him look bad, people see us and they lose faith in him. <clears throat> we now have a generation of leaders, not just talking about the Xers or the Ys's or the millennials, but we have a generation of leaders who are insensitive to consecration. Society has allowed wolves and sheep's clothing to come over the airwaves, pose as preachers and teachers to brainwash us into believing that fasting and praying is outdated. They want us to believe that consecration is no longer necessary. Prayer meetings and altar calls are just a waste of time. And they want to suck all of our power away to render us hopeless for the future. What is happening to the church? 
Some of you, like myself, saw the video clip of the young kindergartner from Oakland, California, who surprised many during his Christmas recital at his church. They gave him the mic to say something, and he got up, he grabbed the mic, and he said, I'm tired of this church. His parents scolded him, and they beat him for what he said, but I wanted that they see what he saw. As in our text with Isaac, oftentimes our kids see more than we think they see. I'm going to leave that alone. I can't speak for the state of this church, but as I look at what is now accepted as the church in America, I echo the young man. Can I talk today, y'all? I echo this young man by saying, saints, I'm tired of this church. People using churches and their members for political gain. I'm tired of this church. We want to be so popular that we lost our power. I'm tired of this church. More backbiting and backstabbing than praying for one another. I'm tired of this church. Leaders using authority abuse to take hold over their parishioners. Using mind control and witchcraft. I'm tired of this. These things have become the new norm. You may be seated. You give me some time to work this thing. And some say this is by far one of the most interesting eras that Christianity has have experienced. We are living in an era where it seems the church and the world are colliding and the church is being converted to the things of the world. But we have to remember that saints, we are the salt of the earth. We are a light upon a hill. We have the power to influence the world. We are not thermometers. We don't change with our inhabitants, but we affect, we are thermostats, we affect our environments. But I think the church has gotten into a point where they've silenced our messengers. They've dictated to us what we can and can't preach. They've loved us to sleep. They've accepted us on platforms we've never been accepted. We were never supposed to be the same. Jesus said, be in this world, but not what? From the music to pop culture and social standards, the lines are being blurred. They want us to feel that the very persistence and the very tenacity that our forefathers used in serving God, even through slavery, what our grandmother and grandfathers did, what our fathers and mothers did, how they served God, their prayer life, they want us to feel like it's no longer necessary. But saints, if we want to be powerful in this day and time, it's time for us to go back to our roots. I'm going to tell you how much influence the church has. The church has more influence on society than we know. So much that in 1916, Margaret Sanger and two of her constituents formed what we now know as Planned Parenthood. They started it in Brownsville, New York, and Margaret linked with an African-American pastor for him to preach their plan in his church to bring abortions into the black community. This is how powerful the church is. She said, if I want to get to the community, I got to funnel my agenda through the church. And now Satan does the same thing. Anything that they want the community to accept. As long as we put a song that says Jesus would it, they funnel it through the church to go into the community. This is the thing right here. The enemy now uses false prophets to dictate to the church a new age doctrine that requires no sacrificing, no consecration. You can just stay as you are. But one thing I've come to experience is the Lord will always receive you how you are. But anybody who's experienced true conversion, they'll, he'll never leave you how he found you. The Bible tells us that the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, but I've come to realize that now... The unbelievers, are you being used to blind the believers? The day we're living in now, the enemy is using the unbelievers to affect the church. Some of us have family members, friends and co-workers who speak to us this 5% or this you are God type stuff. I'm sorry, if I was God, I would not have the aches and pains that I have in my body. I couldn't save myself. I needed an eternal being. 
But now we have the black Israelite movement moving through. And now our children are being affected. See, they know some of us older ones, we're stuck in our ways. They can't get all of us. But now they're trying to affect our children and our grandchildren to pull them out of the way of holiness. Look at somebody and say, where is the sacrifice? The enemy uses deception. He uses trickery. And he uses those who are in the church to pull members out of the church. I've seen pastors and preachers preaching on TBN, preaching on Christian networks who are preaching false doctrine about prosperity, who are preaching grace as a get out of jail free card to sin. And now we'll start to accept this and say, I can do what I want and just repent. But repent means that I ask for forgiveness and I turn away. If you're not turning away, you're not repenting. I'm sorry to tell you. Let me tell you something. If a person desires to win you over, they'll never show you what you don't like. But if I was on a campaign to pull you in, I'll mix my agenda with what feels good. I'll mix my plan with what sounds good. See, a sacrifice isn't a sacrifice if it don't take nothing from you. If it doesn't hurt just a little bit. See, now I can preach you a gospel, but all you got to do is come hear me preach my make it, take it, and claim it, and name it what they do, and you'll find you're going to heaven just as you are. And by the time you realize you grasp the wrong doctrine, it's too late. Look at somebody and say, where's the sacrifice? See, the enemy wants to ease his way. He's not going to possess you right away because he knows you'll recognize that. But what he'll do is try to desensitize you to the things of God. It's the next thing you know, you're dead to Christ. You don't want to hear no more Christian music. Now, I don't know what's going on with this Christian music now anyway. I had my 15-year-old son just tell me last night, Dad, I feel like what a lot of these Christian artists are doing is they're putting words over what sounds good, but there's no power in it. A 15-year-old can recognize that. But see, we don't want to hear worship music. We want something to make us feel better. We want something to make us feel. We want something that's going to move our emotions. So now in the church and the world, all the lines are being blurred. And there's no side of holiness and no side of unrighteous. <sighs> now we come to church and we wonder why we have no effect. We wonder why there are no more signs and wonders. We wonder why people aren't being filled with the Holy Spirit. We wonder why people aren't being healed of diseases. It's because we've lost our consecration. Can I preach today? I know we don't like sermons like this no more. I'll preach about lemons and lemonades next Sunday. But I hear the Spirit saying, I hear you preaching. I hear you singing. I even see your giving. But where is your sacrifice? In the text we find Abraham taking his son of the promise Isaac to the top of Mount Moriah and out of obedience to God, God told him to go and sacrifice his son. Side note, parents, we ought to always give our children back to God. In this day and age, we don't do christening like we used to, but always give your children back to God. But anyway, we find Abraham taking his son up on the mountaintop and I'm sure this wasn't his son's first time. I'm sure he wasn't unfam- this wasn't unfamiliar to him because it wasn't strange to Isaac. Isaac notices the elements of worship. Isaac noticed that a sacrifice, an altar is being built. He said, I see the coals. He said, I see the wood. He said, but Father, where is the sacrifice? Saints, please understand that our children see more than what we think. They see our coals. They see us dancing. They see us shouting. See, they see our wood. They hear us singing and going into worship. But I'm sure they're asking, Mom, Dad, where is? Let me leave it alone. See, when we present our bodies in a God of living sacrifice and not just through lip service, that's when the renewing process starts. Without any sacrifice, there can be no transformation. Some people wonder why it is that I'm still struggling with A, B, and C. I've been saved for five years and I can't get rid of this stronghold. Have you presented your body a sacrifice unto God? 
Have you given him those things that are precious to you? See, some of us want God to see some of our lives. We want to yield him the things that are comfortable. Lord, I give you my Johnny Walker. I give you my night train. But I can't give you my fussing and my cussing. I can't give you my fighting and my gossiping. See, it's too precious. Every now and then, I got to show somebody you can still catch these hands if you violate. So I'll, look like, I'll be looked at as weak if I give you all of me. But I hear the Spirit saying, I either want all of you or none of you at all. Where is the sacrifice? Are you constantly giving God more of you to receive more of him? Or are you saying, Lord, I give you what's comfortable. I give you the filthiness of the flesh. But I'm not going to show you. You already see, but I'm not going to give you the filthiness of my spirit. I give you my fornicating ways. I give you my stealing. I give you this. I give you that. But I can't give you the fact that I have unforgiveness against my father for what he did to me when I was young. Uh Uh-oh. Look, I give you my guns, my drugs, my cigarettes. But I'm not going to give you the fact or give you or let you in that part of my heart that shows that I'm jealous against my sister and my brother in Christ. So now we're walking around as undeveloped Christians, immature believers trying to do a mature work. And we wonder why we're ineffective. Because God said, look, I either want all or none. Either you're hot or cold or I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You go ahead and try to work those works on your own authority, but I'm nowhere in the building. Jesus. Look at somebody say, where is your sacrifice? Where there is no sacrifice, there is no transformation. My walk and my talk may sound different because I've changed the company that I keep. But if people could only hear what's in my heart, If they can read my thoughts, if my thoughts are not brought into subjection. See, y'all can't see what I'm thinking. You just hear my lip service. But if people can really understand or hear what it is that you're trying to say or what you think about them, whether they view you as a sinner or they view you as a saint. I believe in this day and time, God is surveying those who are called by his name. And as this world begins on this downward spiral of moral decay, I can hear God saying, I can see you building your altar. I see you bringing forth your timber, your coals. I see your matches. I even see your smoke. Every now and then, I see your fire. But he's asking, where is your sacrifice? Paul tells us in Romans 12 and 1, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Once you present your body a living sacrifice, that's when transformation begins. But until that point, you'll find yourself wondering, Lord, why am I still struggling? Why am I still fighting? This ain't going to be a shout message today. I'm just saying. Why am I still going through the motions, but I don't feel you any stronger? Why don't I have the power to overcome adversity? As soon as stress or heavy ladens come, I crumble under pressure. Where is the power? Have you presented your body? Have you presented your life? A living sacrifice. Look at somebody one more time and say, neighbor, where is the sacrifice? I believe God is asking, where's the sacrifice today? The songwriter says, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? He says, your heart does the spirit control. Saints, I want to ask you today. In a time or a phase or era where we have more praise breaks than I've ever seen. We have the baddest bands, the best musicians, the biggest churches. Where is the sacrifice. I wanted to shout you all today, and I'm not done, but I wanted to shout you all today. I wanted to see something that said, Lord, give me a message that will help uplift the people. Everybody's going back and telling my spirit. He said, no. He said, because as long as they're still wallowing in their old ideologies, still stuck in their sins, there's no reason to praise. There's no reason to celebrate. It's actually a time to mourn. He said, because after a while, 
If they're not ready, I'm going to send something through. And those who are not stable are going to be washed away. Yeah. Saints, we're living in the end times. The enemy has so many tricks. He has demons and spirits that survey us weekly. My father used to say that he has a devil of their enemies of their surveying spirits that look you up like a horse inspector looks up a horse. He knows your every weakness. He knows all of your strengths. And this principality reports back to his principality what it takes to make you tick. See, if we don't understand spiritual warfare, a lot of y'all look at me like I'm crazy when I talk about this because y'all don't want to go that deep. But y'all got to understand warfare in the spirit is real. Jesus told Peter, Satan desires to sift you as If we don't understand that in this day and age it's going to take consecration and sacrifice to overcome the plots of the enemy, we'll soon be blown away as the chafe. God is saying, where is your consecration? Where is your sacrifice? The enemy is patient. He's been waiting us out. He'll say, I'll let you shout. I'll let you jump. I'll let you scream. I'll let you holler. But when you come down from your jump, I'm going to have something waiting for you that you can't fight. Because your emotions sound nice. But your spirit ain't ready for what I got waiting for you. Saints, where is the sacrifice? What are we getting rid of? Are we renewing ourselves daily? Are we getting rid of the things that aren't pleasing unto God? Why come to church every Sunday and not be changed and transformed? God's saying, I want all of you. To face in this day and time, parents, we got to stay consecrated to know what, what our children are up against. The devil they are facing is a little bit more cunning than the one we face, or the enemy is the spirits. I don't know if y'all see these movies like uh, I was a big Terminator fan when I was younger. Every year they come out with one or every few years they come out with one that's a little bit more upgraded than the other. But that's how the enemy is working. He's not going to come the same way in 2019 that he did in 2010. But we have to have ourselves laid on the altar. Consecrate ourselves before the Lord. Have ourselves prepared for what's to come. Everybody standing. I had planned on even tuning up at the end of this, if the Holy Spirit says so. But when we still have to come into service on Sunday morning and start rebuking strongholds in the middle of the service, where's the church? I want to pray. I want to pray. We're in a time now where the enemy desires for the doors of the church to be closed. Scandal is on the rise and I, anybody who's on me on social media knows that they're making sure that everything that goes on in the church has play by play commentary. The enemy is desiring to make the church look weak. But there are still a few who have not bowed their knees to bail. But if you feel like there's something in your life that's stopping you from getting to that place of true sacrifice, of giving yourself to God, I want you to come to this altar. And I want to pray with you. God is saying, I hear your worship. I hear your singing. But I don't see a sacrifice. Where is the sacrifice? And parents, I don't care if you don't smoke, you don't chew, you don't hang around with those that do. If you're not in tune to the spirit to know what it is your child is getting involved or your grandchild is getting involved in. If you're so busy speaking in tongues that you can't speak to your child and sit them down and say, listen here, baby, this is what's going on. You need to... The blood is going to be on your hands. Children, teenagers, young adults. Please understand, I know us as parents have ways, we can be a little irritating at times, but we've been where you are. 
and we see what's up the road. And see, there was a time some of us could run into mischief and we could, oh, come on back. But the devil got something for you now that you'll run and never come back. You'll never find your way back home. I barely made it in before the door shut. Don't you think that the devil doesn't have something custom made to all of your likenesses? Young and old alike. Even at an old age or older age, he'll try to pull you out. We got to begin to give God a sacrifice. I'm praying that you understand the urgency of this message. Because it makes no sense to come to church and begin to praise and keep praising and, and shouting and dancing. And we're not giving God any more than we gave him last week. I want to be so sold out that you see none of me, but when you see me, you feel Christ. You see Christ in me. But I can't do that if I'm not giving him more, if I'm not consecrating myself, seeking him in prayer, seeking him in my devotion time. Where is the sacrifice? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. We lift our hands to you. We lift our hearts and our spirits in total surrender. Forgive us, O God, for every transgression. Forgive us, O God, for not giving you everything you require. Forgive us, O God, for not totally being sold out unto you. Forgive us now, O God. Search our hearts. Search our minds. Search our souls. We repent to you now. We ask for forgiveness and we turn away from the things of the world. Father, help us to follow you closely. Help us to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Father, take those things out of us that we don't need. Renew our mind, renew our hearts, renew our souls, renew our spirits in the name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives. Use us for your service. We give you the yielding now. Take all of me, Lord. Take all of me, Lord. Fill me with your Holy Ghost. Have thine away in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands to you. No other help I know. If you would withdraw yourself from us, rather should we go? I'm calling on you, Lord. I'm calling on you, Lord. Have your way in my heart. Transform my mind. Transform my heart. Break up the fallow ground. In the name of Jesus, do the work, oh God. Do the work, oh God. Do the work, oh God, that you want done in me. Not my will, but your will be done. Use me for your service. Draw me nearer. In the name of Jesus, have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Your way, Lord. Your way, Lord. Camp pastors, you may pray. Have thine own way, Lord. You know my heart. You know my mind. You know my desires. You know my spirit. We call forth the man of God, the woman of God, that you have ordained and predestined. Use me, Lord. Help me to be a witness. Help me to walk upright. If I falter while I'm trying, don't be angry, but help me to stay. I want to go all the way. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me. I present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Purge me with hyssop that I may be clean. Wash me through and through. Wash me that I may be whiter than snow. Make me to hear 
joy and gladness that the bones that you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from our sin. Hide your face. I know I've neglected my devotion. I may have neglected my word. I may have neglected my prayer life. But forgive me, Lord. Draw me close. Draw me close. Draw me close. Draw me close. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Woo! It feels better in here. Everybody who can't just stand to your feet and give the Lord the praise. Offer up to him the sacrifice of praise. Help me see if you, it's a war cry. See, the Lord wants to do something to him, but there's a pull and there's a tugging. The enemy don't want to let go of some of y'all. So sometimes you got to engage in a war cry. Come on, clap those hands. Almost there, one more time. Come on, if you're singing, you feel better. There it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. your Lord. We honor your Lord. We bless you, O oh Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for coming to see about us. Thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. We pray that you enjoyed that word on today. Where is the sacrifice? 
I believe this is a time where God is calling for never before for the saints to sacrifice and give us some things that, that will draw us closer to him, the things that are hindering us from that walk that we need or desire to have with the Lord. I believe this is the time where he's calling for us to yield to him those things and let him have his way in our, in our life. At this time, we are about to partake in the Lord's Supper, but before we go into the Lord's Supper, I want to read a very familiar passage of scripture that I'm sure many of you have heard or you uh, still read on the days when we do partake in the Lord's Supper or to partake in the Lord's body. And it was written in 1 Corinthians and that's found in the 11th chapter, the 23rd verse. And it reads, uh, according to the NIV, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after he had supped saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood or in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Going to the 27th verse, therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. And I want to talk about that part for a brief second. And uh, I think it's the New King James Version that says, drinks of this cup unworthily. Whoever eats of this bread and drinks of this cup unworthily. Some people get unworthily mixed up with unworthy. No one is worthy to take the body of Christ, but through the shed blood of Christ, we're all worthy to partake in his blood, and his death. But unworthily means that we are not in a place of repentance. We're not in a place where we're putting things away, but we're constantly still walking in a place of, of rebellion. We're constantly still walking in sin. We're constantly still walking uh, in lasciviousness and there's no place in us that desires to get it right with God. In that manner, in that manner, we are sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. And I wanna uh, uh, just encourage you at this time and implore you and challenge you at this time if there's anything in your life, even before we pray the prayer of repentance, before we pray over the bread and the cup, if there's something in your life that you know that you have to get right, I pray right now that you give it to God, that you repent and ask God to forgive you for your sins. It's almost like the word repentance is a, is a, profan is a word of profanity or a profane word because people feel like, oh, here we come with this. No, it's, it's, it's necessary as believers that we repent of our sins, that we cleanse our soul and ask God to cleanse us from our, uh, all unrighteousness. I'm going to read and I'm almost done. It says, a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. That's self-explanatory. We ought to say, Lord, search me. Lord, search my mind, search my heart. You know the innermost parts of me. If there's something in me that's not like you, if there's something in me that's not pleasing in your sight, God, take it out of me. I want to be clean. I want to be right. Cleanse my thoughts. This is your body. I'm partaking in your body. You were sinless, but you were also bruised for our transgressions. You are wounded for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you and with your stripes we are here. Father, you, did, you, you made this ultimate sacrifice for me. You gave your life. You knew no sin but you took up our sins and took it to the, to the cross. And because of this, I have the opportunity and the right to the tree of life and the privilege to partake in your body. And with that being said, it's an honor. I believe it's an honor in my heart. It's an honor and a privilege that we partake in the Lord's body, that we're able to partake in his body. He says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So when we come together to partake in the Lord's body, whether it be via virtual church or together gathering in one place, we have to remember that we're there for one reason, and that's to commemorate the sacrifice that he made. And in commemorating the sacrifice that, we, that he made, I don't take it for granted and we should not take it for granted. But we should have our hearts and our minds tuned towards him, asking God, it's a time of solace, a time of, of, of meditation to say, Lord, I can do better than what I'm doing. Even during this pandemic, I have not been in church like I should. I know we have not been coming together in the church and there are some things that I may have slipped up on. I may have slacked off in my reading, my prayer, my meditation, my, my devotion. Father, forgive me. Turn me back towards you. Turn my mind and my spirit, my heart back towards you. Clean out everything that hinders, break up the fallow ground out of my life. Anything that will stop me or hinder me from getting close to you. Let me hear your voice again. And I believe in this time, this is what God is calling for us to do. Every time we partake in the Lord's body. Now this repentance should be a daily thing, but especially when we take time to, uh, to come together, to partake in his body, we should ask the Lord to repent us and lift those things or take those things from out of us that hinders us from getting closer to him. At this time, we wanna pray over the elements of communion. If you'll bow your heads with me, kind Father. Father, we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege that we have in you to come together to partake in your body. Father, we pray right now that those who are watching at home, that you would take the bread and the cup and that you would change it from the natural to the supernatural. 
that you will purge us from all sins. Forgive us for all unrighteousness in our lives. Be the God of, the God of our salvation, the God of our hearts, the Lord of our life. We yield ourselves back to you. Save us, Lord. If we've if we fallen short, we repent now, God. Save us again. Shine the light of heaven on our souls. Father, if you find anything that should not be, we pray that you'll take it out now, God. We love you. We praise you. And we thank you for this privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we get ready to partake in the Lord's body, those of you who have your communion elements ready, Paul said, for I received from the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night he was betrayed. After he had given thanks, he took the bread and broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body that is broken for you. Take and eat thee all of it, the broken body of Christ. In the same manner, he also took the cup and said, this is the new testament in my blood, the new covenant that was shed for the remission of sins. He says, often as, the, as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. The shed blood of Christ. Take and drink the all of it. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, one day when I was lost, Jesus died on the cross. He said, now I know it was the blood for me. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the blood every day. It's the blood that cleansed me from my sins, the blood that saved me. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And we're thankful on today that Jesus Christ shed his blood for us, that we may have the right to eternal life and that we may have a right to be freed and dismissed in, uh, from our sins. God has been good to us. He's been so gracious to us. And we speak on the Independence Day, but the day that we were brought out of, out of spiritual slavery and brought into the newness of life, that was a wonderful day. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he saved me. This right now is time to worship the Lord through giving those of you who are, are able to give at this time. We pray that you would sow into the ministry. We want to make an appeal to you at this time. You see the graphics on the screen for the New Jerusalem Church. The Church of the Advent, we're just excited that you had decided to partner with us. And today for New Jerusalem, it's our Jubilee Sunday, which we give $50 on top of what we already what we normally give on our regular Sundays to commemorate our 50th year anniversary. Although we're in the pandemic, we're still going through with our uh, Jubilee. And we're glad that the Lord has kept the New Jerusalem Church for 50 years. For Church of the Advent, we thank you for all of your liberal giving. You've been so kind and gracious. New Jerusalem, thank you for your liberal giving. And those of you who are not part of either church, but you've decided to partner with us, we thank God for you because you're still helping us to stay afloat during this pandemic and we're able to get things done. I pray that God will bless you a hundredfold for your sacrifice. And remember, until next time, God is in control. Satan is defeated and we have the victory. God bless you. We love you. See you soon.